Who has known the mind of the Lord? Five days ago, the Congregation of Holy Cross celebrated the final profession of five seminarians. These five men, my brothers, promise to live the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience forever, and to offer their lives and their lives' work in the service of the Lord for the needs of the church and the world. This would be an incredible commitment to make in the best of times, and we know these are not the best of times. How were they able to make this commitment? Could they have somehow found a way to know the mind of the Lord? Two days later, our community witnessed and celebrated the other end of religious life when we laid to rest Father Lynn Banus, who had professed his own final vows almost 70 years ago. He lived his life poorly, chastely, and obediently, and yet with great zeal and great joy. The best proof? At age 91, he had not yet gotten around to retiring. Surely, Father Banus, at some point in those 91 years, came to know the mind of the Lord, right? Each of us, by virtue of our baptism, has been called by Jesus to follow him and proclaim him in some particular way, to live our vocation, to have a particular way that we will serve and save the world, for Father Banus and for my five now finally pre professed brothers, this way is within religious life, according to the Holy Cross Constitutions. Each of us, though, must figure out the will of God in our lives. We must come to know God's plan. We must come, it seems, to know his mind. But St. Paul tells us tonight that we cannot know God's judgments, his ways, or his mind. So what are we to do? How did these men know with such certainty that they could profess and live these vows forever? The answer lies not in deciding to, but in discerning. Although discernment is often used as a spiritual synonym for decision-making, discernment asks much more of us. Decision implies weighing options, considering alternatives, making a definite choice at a point in time, and then taking responsibility for the consequences. Discernment begins similarly. We weigh and we pray our options, and we do make a decision. But discernment then calls us not to stick to our guns, and bear the consequences come what may, but to remain open for God to revise and extend his call and trust the consequences to him. This is the hard part. We want to hold on to that decision as a final word, but this is why our formation at Moreau is at least seven years long, and it's also why Father Banus hadn't yet retired. It ends up taking, it ends up requiring time for our vocation to unfold. Ultimately, it takes the work of a lifetime. The art of discernment is more an art of constantly asking yourself, what moves my heart? When do I feel most alive? What gives me superhero levels of energy despite my sleep deprivation and my busy schedule? Not only must we ask these questions, we must then trust the answers. If you saw the second Incredibles movie this summer, you might have wondered why none of the characters aged. We were waiting for 14 years for this sequel. The reason is because the superpower of each family member is actually supposed to represent the stage of life of that character. Jack-Jack has countless powers to represent the boundless possibilities of youth. He's not yet learned what power he will be given to serve and save the world. At the outset of this semester, each of us is like Jack-Jack. 
There are countless opportunities and possibilities ahead of us. You may opt to approach the year as the next step in a decision you've already made and go the way that you've already decided. Or you may be tempted into trying to keep all of your options open until you can absolutely know with certainty the mind of God. Unlike Jack-Jack, though, we don't have the luxury of waiting. Alternatively, you may approach the year as a way to find out what surprising way God will set your heart on fire and ask how you will hear that call that arises up from within as from his spirit. If you can do this, you will come to learn to depend not upon the mind of God, but upon his spirit. And his spirit speaks the language of our hearts.